My kids love bathing their horse, a 15-year-old paint gilding. Gotta get those white spots. Gotta get that elbow <laughs> grease. When the weather warms up, I wanted to ask if there's any pro or con to a horse getting bathed three to four times a week. And if there's a good time, the kids should bathe him, i.e. after a ride, after eating, before eating. Oh, okay. What do you think? Mm. Well, um, what a great hobby. Her it's, kids could be doing something way worse. It's so true. Point it's at the horse. That's great. I'm curious what about bathing the horse they like because for a lot of people, it's a chore. It does. So for me, the part where it runs down your arm and oh, into your armpit. Oh, I love armpit. that part. Oh, that is my it's favorite so part. Worst. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Cringe worthy. Um, three to four times a week, to me, sounds a little excessive. I mean, there's not a rule about this, and every discipline in horses, of course, does it differently. But I guess I've heard through the grapevine maybe once a week is sort of a standard but I mean that's not a hard and fast set rule by any means the reason though we don't bathe more often than that is because it it does a lot of a couple things that are on your con list it strips the horse of their natural oils mm -hmm. they need those for protection uh, it can dry the skin and also dry the hair and so a dry flaky coat um, can make them more prone to a skin infection. There's also a normal, don't get creeped out by this, but there's normal bacteria that live on your skin all the time, but they're good bacteria, just like in your, in your hindgut. And if you use soap on them, then you strip the body of them too. And so again, it sets you up for other bacteria coming in that are not good. Um, Horses, now I'm guessing he doesn't because of the care. Horses that have like a long fetlock hairs, mm -hmm. if those get wet and stay wet and don't have time to dry in between, that can maybe lead to scratches, which is like um, when the pasterns get chapped and infected. And it, it, it can be painful. And then lastly, keep going down, I think of the hooves. We always talk about not doing a wet, dry, wet, dry cycle with the hooves. And so even if I have a horse that needs a bath, like after a ride, I don't need a lot, know a lot of horses that need baths after eating, unless mm -hmm. this horse like, you know, cookie monster eating style. But after riding, if they've sweated on the girth or under the bridle, I might take just a little bucket of warm water and a sponge and wipe just those areas because I don't want to get the feet wet or I don't want to get the legs wet. Um, so I, I guess I would try to back off, maybe think of something else the kids can do like mm -hmm. braid the mane or, is somebody currying? Because you currying know, is great. currying is great, especially if you use these gloves, I which mean, are super fun for kids to use. And they come in different colors, it's true. right? And they have they have different sizes. Mm -hmm. So these are like the you know man hand size, but there's kid sizes. So they might think these gloves are just fantastic, and then you might be able to back down on the bathing a little bit because three to four times a week just seems excessive. Tail. You could wash the tail. Mm -hmm. I know people that wash the tail every day. So that's an idea. Um, and then, you know, I was going to say this, clicker training. Clicker training is so much fun. That's something they could do with the horse. So that's true. maybe steer them in some healthier directions that don't involve bathing so much, but yeah. still involve interaction, good, healthy interaction with the horse, mm -hmm. I guess. And pro tip uh, from my personal past, if your kids practice braiding or banding manes and they get really good at it, they can make a lot of money oh in high gosh. school and college yeah. braiding and banding at the horse shows. So that's a good way to uh, spend some time and invest in your future. Excellent, yes. Yeah.